Wildcat Week continues here on LoneStarConference.org. I'm Grant Boone at Abilene Christian University, here with first-year football coach Ken Collins. And, Coach, uh, just in the last few days, you have uh, finally gotten to do what you've been hired to do, and that's coach some football. Spring practice is underway. Just give me a feel for uh, the anticipation leading up to uh, last uh, Tuesday when you started. Well, this whole time I've just been ready to get back out and do what is a little more natural, which is to get out and coach and run drills. Uh, but the problem is I spend 20 minutes as the head coach within the practice not running drills, just kind of overseeing and making sure we're on time and we don't run over. And it's uh, that was a little bit uh, – there's a little discomfort in that. Just You know, I've just got to get used to it a little bit. But uh, but it was good. I mean, it's really good to be back out there and, uh, and watching our guys work. So it is a big deal. Anytime there's a coaching change, how much of an advantage? You have a couple of new coaches. We'll talk about those guys in a moment. But how much of an advantage do you think it is that there are so many familiar faces, including your own, having moved over from offensive coordinator? Well, I think it's, I think it's good. You know, continuity is critical. In, in anything, in any sort of relationship, in any sort of business, continuity is, is really good. So that's what I wanted to do with the offensive side is uh, move guys on offense that have played for me. They know what I want. They know what I expect. They know how to get it out of, the, uh, out of our guys. And that way, uh, you know, when I leave that room, the you know the wheels don't necessarily start coming off. They may wobble a little bit from t- they did when I was in there even. But uh, but you know the thing the the car will be going straight down the road and uh, I'll be able to spend more time a little bit more time with the defense, which is critical. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about this year's offense, the 2012 offense. It begins with a guy who I've got to believe uh, is one of the leading contenders for the Harlan Hill Trophy in 2012. It's a guy who's been a finalist a couple of times, Mitchell Gale. Tell me about how important he is to this offense and what he means off the field maybe as well. Well, you look at any level of high, co- highly competitive football and how the quarterback goes is how your season is going to go. When you look at coaches that have to move on from their jobs, you, a lot of times you can look back, and it's and a lot of it's not good quarterback play. And so it is if so it is the other in the other direction. If you have a dynamic offense and one that is really explosive and really efficient, which is more that's what we talk about more of anyway around here. Uh, it starts with a quarterback. And Mitchell's been around. He knows what we expect. He is a leader. He has a passion for the game. He 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 loves people he loves to love on people and and he knows that gets the best out of them and uh he can drive them he can ruffle some feathers and rattle the cage a little bit too as most good leaders uh yeah. can when uh, it's when it's the right time that's exactly right it's exactly right but there's a good balance there and he's got that he has got one of the one of the best hearts the biggest hearts that i've ever coached 38 touchdowns and three interceptions in his sophomore season. Another terrific year last year. Let's talk about the guys around him on the offensive side of the ball. You lose a couple of senior running backs in Daryl Richardson, uh, who I, I think if, you, if it's possible to be the third all-time scorer at a university, especially one that scored a lot of touchdowns through the years like ACU, and to do it quietly, I feel like Daryl Richardson did that. And Reggie Brown was just a, a relentless, tireless worker for you for a couple of years. You lose those guys, but you do have some uh, – y- your cupboard isn't totally bare. You bring back the Shark, Sharkandrick West, yeah. uh, and you've got a little Daryl Cantu Harkless if you want him, and, and you've got a guy I know you like in Travis Tarver as well, who's a redshirt freshman. Tell me about those backs. Well, we don't know much about Tarver. We know he has a lot of potential, and that's about it so far. And we're going we're gonna to put Typical the – Typical redshirt yeah, freshman. That's right. exactly right. You hope they have potential. and that's so. But I think we did good getting – him here mm-hmm. and uh, he's a really good guy, uh, intelligent, super explosive, really flexible guy, and so we'll see. We'll see this spring. So I, I don't, I don't I, I'm not going to say too much about those young guys because they hadn't done anything. Yeah, Got to earn it. That's right. exactly right. Now, Shakandrick's yeah. the, the shark. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's he's explosive. Every week could be Shark oh, Week yeah, here at ACU. Yeah. You never know when the shark's going to get in the end zone, <laughs> and that's good. Yeah. That's a good thing. He, he he has shown a, even from his his first few games, he's shown the ability. Uh, to be an explosive player. Now, we haven't seen him carry it 25 times a game, and you may not even ask that of him this year, and you tell me if that's the kind of thing you want, but we do know that he can take it to the house when he gets in any kind of space. Yeah, you know, consistency is his deal, and that's when you're efficient, 
you don't need somebody trying to make trying to hit the home run. You know, you just need hey, make the routine play, and then your ability will take you, you know, to the end zone a lot of times. But as far as running backs, we'll use we'll use Harkless back there some. He'll still play receiver. Uh, we'll use him back there in the backfield some because he he's I mean he's a first down machine. I mean he'll he'll make yards. He will, and, and and you didn't run him at all for the first maybe seven games of last year. Then you brought him into the backfield. He was productive. Uh, a quick word about the wide receivers. You do bring back Taylor Gabriel from Mesquite Horn High School, and he was all conference last year and well deserved. I thought. Sure, uh, Taylor's back. All of our receivers are back. Outside outside of Ben Gibbs. All of our pass catchers are back. Uh, of course, uh, you know Daryl Richardson. We lost him. He caught forty something passes, you know, last year. But our, our running backs are going to catch some bo- catch some balls. Uh, but I feel really good about our receivers. You know, Darian Hogg. I mean, he's just a solid guy. We threw for three hundred forty eight yards a game last year, and I, that's probably too much when you think about it. We yeah. probably should have a little more balance in our lives than that, you know. But but uh, but that's good. I, mean, I feel good about our receivers, and uh, we don't have a super explosive guy. Uh, but we've got solid people. Talk to me about the offensive line. You got to protect uh, Mitchell, your senior quarterback, and you have to open up some holes for those uh, running backs. It is going to be a season of of some new faces on that line, isn't it? Sure, sure. Josh Perez, though he is he is a foundation type guy. I mean, he's really good. Blake Spears from Abilene Cooper. Uh, those guys are good, and we've just got a we've got a you know, we've got a bunch of uh, young guys in the O line that have got to come on. And it's like that. I don't want to say too much about them because yeah. they haven't done yeah. anything no, yet. No. I don't want to after the spring then talk to me. We'll, we'll we'll check with you then. <laughs> uh, quickly about your defense. Rather than players, I want to talk about the two new faces on the coaching staff. Tell us about those two new guys you brought in. Well, Darian Doolin is our defensive coordinator. Came in uh, from Coffeyville Junior College. Uh, he's been the head coach there for the last four years. Uh, he is a he's a quality coach, and he's gonna he's gonna demand that guys do right. Uh, he's gonna keep things somewhat simple. He's not quite as simple as he as he as once told me on like on his interview. He's a little more exotic, which is you know, that's okay. But but no, he's a He's he's a great coach, great person, wonderful heart. Uh, he's good to be around every day. He's going to get the best out of those guys, and then uh, and he's going to uh, coach the secondary. Uh, I know that was important to bring in a guy uh, of personal character. The other guy you brought in is a familiar face to the Lone Star Conference. Yes, we've gone we've gone to battle for a, year, a total of nine years. Uh, against Mark Roboto. Uh, uh, in 98 and 99, he was the defensive coordinator at Eastern New Mexico. Mm-hmm. Then he was, took the head coaching job, uh, well, when uh, uh, Chris did yeah. here. And then uh, he's, you know, he's been the head coach there at Eastern for the last uh, seven years. Yeah. And he's a no-brainer. I mean, he's a guy, uh, he's got a passion for the game special teams freak show he's really good at special teams i mean you ask anybody who's coached against him and uh you know he makes you uh, you know be on point as far as defending you actually have to defend him in the in the kicking game and i've i've given him the reins to that and said hey just let's win games through special teams and he's gonna also coach our linebackers so he's 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 an excellent coach wonderful person shows up he loves to be a wildcat he absolutely to see him in purple instead of green, it's, it's pretty cool. I, told, I tell him that almost every day. Uh, let me just get you to give us a quick word about some of the new names on defense because you have a guy like L.B. Suggs, a veteran back there in the secondary, but there are guys like Aston Whiteside who much delight of the Lone Star Conference has moved on. There are a couple of names uh, that, uh, that you've brought in that I know you're going to count on even this year. Sure. Melvin Shedd, we, we, we brought in two defensive tackles. Melvin Shedd is a junior college guy, and then Nick Finney is another defensive tackle. Both of those are defensive tackle uh, guys from junior colleges. And, uh, you know, we're switching to a 4-3. We need, you know, more D tackles. And we, we went and invested in some guys, and we, we think that'll pay off. And uh, we brought in uh, brought in a, a corner in Eric Frain from from Los Angeles Pierce Junior College and he's a he's six foot two and he can run and you know he's 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 gonna got to grow you know this spring and can't say too much good about him yet he hadn't done anything oh that's exactly right I mean he's six <laughs> two and he can run but uh, no he's we're we're hoping for good things for him from him and uh, and then Garrett Langthorpe is a guy that we a new guy that we brought yeah. in uh, this semester uh, from last played at Blinn offensive lineman and uh, he's good he could play tackle guard or center. You got a practice to run, don't you? Yes, I do. In fact, I'm late for my second day of practice. Go get him. Go get him. That's Coach Ken Collins. 
And thanks to you for watching Wildcat Week all week long on the Lone Star Conference website. For now, I'm Grant Boone from Abilene Christian University.